let's go ahead and get started just to make sure we have time um, to give everyone the floor. We do have um, one faculty presenter uh, we're still waiting for. Hopefully we'll sign in soon. So let's just go ahead and get started. And I will say um, for today's session, we do have quite a few attendees. So we have disabled the chat, but the Q&A is available. So throughout the session, as faculty are speaking, please feel free to put questions into the Q&A. Um, we'll take those and present them to the faculty to address as we go along. Um, so thank you everyone for being here today. Again, this is our spring 2023 hypothesis faculty showcase. Um, there's a URL to the slide deck down here if you want to open that up. But I'm gonna go ahead and just dive in and get us started. My name is Jessica Fuller. I'll be your host today. I am a customer success manager here at Hypothesis. I'm located in Portland, Oregon, where we're having very strange spring weather. Um, April is always a bit unpredictable. Um, so if you have any questions, please reach out to your customer success manager if you're a current customer. I know we have some folks with us today who are not yet partners or who are unfamiliar with Hypothesis. I will say today we're taking a higher look at how faculty are actually using the tool, but if you would like to dive in more deeply and get a demo or a one-to-one -one consultation, we're here to help you. So please either reach out to success at Hypothesis or education at Hypothesis and we'll be happy to help. Before we turn it over to our four faculty presenters, I wanna zoom out a little bit and just take a look at what is Hypothesis? What are we even talking about today? and make a few remarks on how Hypothesis fits into teaching and learning. So I'm gonna show rather than tell, for those who are new to Hypothesis or aren't totally sure what it is or what it does, let's look at what it looks like to annotate with Hypothesis quickly here. So Hypothesis is a social annotation tool where students can gather together within a text and have a conversation in the margins of a text. What we're looking at here is an online chemistry te textbook that serves as a great example of what this can look like with students. So on the left, you have the text itself, which as you can see has yellow highlights. The highlighting corresponds to places where students have made a comment about the text on the right. So on the right is Hypothesis itself. It's a social annotation sidebar where students can ask questions about the material, they can reply to each other, they can bring in images or video or GIFs um, to expand the conversation, to make connections between the reading and other things they've learned in other courses or in their lives. They can kind of serve as experts and link to outside content here. But the ultimate goal is that students are brought into the text to have a conversation within the text itself, kind of like how you would think of a discussion board that's moved on top of the reading itself. So students are propelling the conversation forward, engaging with the material and with each other. And as you can see, students can have a threaded discussion. To annotate with Hypothesis, um, it's very straightforward. All you need is a mouse or your finger if you're on a tablet. And you're gonna highlight some text. And when you do that, you're presented with two options to either annotate or highlight that text. When you click annotate, you're given a text box on the right where you can type in a question or a comment or reply to a classmate. What does comparative mean? I tag this question if I wanted. And then students can post their comment to the class, which saves their annotation and makes it visible to everyone, at which point students could reply. So this again is just a very quick overview of the tool. And again, if you have questions about Hypothesis or want to dive into this more deeply, we're happy to do that. Um, please do reach out to us after today's session. I wanted to make just a few comments on the benefits of Hypothesis, but really I think our faculty presenters here are gonna say that much better than I could. Um, but I will briefly say that Hypothesis makes reading active, visible, and social. And I'm gonna to briefly touch on these three things. Active means that when you add social annotation to a reading in your course, you're really asking students to slow down and linger in the text, ask questions, 
um, reply to classmates, make connections between what they're reading and something else they've experienced in life or read or seen in the media. All of these things are going to help them develop those active reading skills and ultimately become better readers and hopefully discover that reading can be really fun and pleasurable. Um, the second tenet of hypothesis is that um, social annotation makes student reading visible to instructors as well. This means that when you use hypothesis, you as an instructor get a very cool window into the kinds of reactions and experiences that your students are having with the text. So that might look like um, students not quite understanding something that you thought that would be more obvious as they were reading. Or maybe students get into a debate or they're really excited about something on page three. It gives you this very cool window into their reactions that I think is sometimes hard to get in other mediums. And hypothesis also makes reading social. And I know when I was in college, all of the reading I did was very solitary and I did it by myself. All my margin notes were just in pen in the margins of my books. With hypothesis, the text becomes a collaborative space where students get to see and hear from each other. They get this wide um, array of different perspectives on the text. They get to see that they're not the only one maybe who doesn't understand a complex reading. So this can be really empowering for students and help you build classroom community in your course. A few notes just about hypothesis. Um, we work with most of the major LMSs. Students don't have to create a hypothesis account, but are just brought seamlessly through into the tool um, via our LTI integration. So we work well with Canvas, Blackboard, D2L, Brightspace, Moodle, Schoology, Sakai. Um, with that, you can also grade annotation sets in your LMS. This is to make it easy on you as an instructor to be able to easily filter and see each student's annotations isolated from the rest one at a time so you can give them a grade and feedback on those annotations. And if you use Canvas, Blackboard, or D2L Brightspace, you can also split your students into small groups and have them annotate in a smaller group of students rather than as a whole class, um, which there's various reasons why you might do that. Um, but this is a very cool feature that can, again, help the student voice shine in your class. So without further ado, again, if you do have questions, please email us at success at hypothesis or reach out to your customer success manager if you know who they are. But we have four faculty presenters with us today. We have Felix Flores from Metropolitan State University of Denver. We have Nita Gopal from Modesto Junior College. We have Catalina Yanone from the, the Ohio State University and Kristen Polizato from Kingsboro Community College. Each of these folks are going to share with us um, what drew them to hypothesis, how they use hypothesis in their teaching, what the benefits have been in their in their courses, what they've seen come out of social annotation with their students. I'd also love to hear um, did something surprise you as you use social annotation with your students? Did something kind of come out of that experience that you weren't anticipating? And another thing that I, I would actually love to hear from folks is what sort of advice would you give to someone who is just starting out with hypothesis? Um, and with that, I think we're going to turn it over to Kristen to go first. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Thank All you, right. Jessica. Yeah, thanks, Kristen. Appreciate it. Hi, everybody. Um, if you're not familiar with CUNY, um, we have, a, depending on how you count, 19 or 25 campuses in New York City. And I am at one of the community colleges in Brooklyn. And we have a, you know, very diverse population of students. I think most schools have diverse now, but um, Ours is just, I don't, you could probably find someone from any background you could pick there. And that includes academic abilities. So one of my goals in using hypothesis was to um, help students move from wherever they were to closer to mastery. And I do teach biology. It's for bio majors, general bio for bio majors. And um I think this is my first semester using it. So I did the Hypothesis Academy in January. <clears throat> I think it was the first cohort, at least with Christy. 
Um, and it was really great. And now I'm in my first semester of using it. So I'm just going to, for two minutes, maybe four minutes, show you how I used it and then tell you like how it's working for me and what I thought about it and all of that. Okay. So let me share my screen. Not that. Um, this is my class right now. And they have this assessed, you know, this is for points, student choice assignments. And two of the choices are annotation. Okay. The other one is them making up test questions. And then I make the tests out of their questions. So that one's really great, but it's not annotation. And um, they can either, my goal was to have them really focus on learning objectives. So every week, I'll just show you this quickly. Every week, there's a list of what you're supposed to master that week. You know, a lot of us are familiar with that format. And I really have my class focused on this stuff. So I made the annotation assignments really focused on it. Students love to read the textbook. I don't know how effective it is for them, but they want to do it in order to study. So I made the chapters each week an annotation assignment. And I told them what you need to do in there is find the answers to the learning objectives because that's what the test is on. <laughs> so as you're annotating, that's what you should do. So I'll just show you one example of their annotation. So unit one is on evolution and this is the chapter from the book. And um, they put, you know, umpteen, I don't know how many annotations there. Um, and out of the 22 students, 19 of them were participating in that, as you can see there. Okay, so that was the, the just annotating your reading assignment. And the other option was to directly annotate the learning objectives. And you can see with a class of 22 that just about everything is highlighted. Um, so that was for unit one that they already had a test on. And that's how I realized I shouldn't that I should use small groups, as Jessica was just showing us, that I'll get more um, interaction and maybe more focused discussion by using small groups. So that's one thing I've learned. I'm not going to change it up on them in the middle of the semester, but I definitely learned that lesson that the whole class annotating together results in just too much for them to read and take in. So that's that. Um, now, as far as like, uh, effect, so they took their first test and I graded it and they're taking the second one this week. We, st our semester starts really late for those of you that might be wondering about that timing. Um, so we're only halfway through, but they did great on the first test compared to previous semesters. And this is a hybrid class. So my in-person classes, it was usually the average is pretty good, 75 or so, 70 to 75 on that first exam. Um, but the hybrid class or fully online is abysmal, like in the 50% average range. And this was much, much better, like 68. So not quite as high, but I think it's because they knew what to focus on and they'd had to put it into writing. And, you know, well, maybe they did put it into chat GPT. I don't know. And then copied and pasted it for their annotation. But they had to at least think about what was supposed to go there and ask the right question if they did use AI. Um, and it seemed to have helped them to focus on the right things to prep for the exam. Um, so for me, that was central as to everything had to be focused on what I wanted them to be able to do by the end. Um, but what I learned is, first of all, small groups would work better for my class, but also that it's kind of boring for them to just, okay, we're studying for the test. And then tomorrow we're also studying for the test. And that's all we're doing is studying these learning objectives for the test and like annotating them over and over. Um, so one thing that I'm working on now, I'm in a professional development um, kind of workshop where we're looking at, I'm just going to share my screen one more time, redesigning your syllabus. And I'm having the class, let me see if I can get there quickly. I don't know if I can or not, but I'm trying. Um, what I want the class to do is annotate the draft of a new syllabus. So this is not mine. This is a colleague who already did it. And you can see, instead of just being a whole bunch of text with the grading outline and the late policy and all that, 
it's a different kind of syllabus. And I, I would make a draft website like this and have them annotate it, not just to comment on the types of assignments and the options for grading and the policies, which I will have them do, but also to comment on one of the things we've talked about in our workshop is the, the visuals you have. So, you know, she has these little pictures on the side. I want them to pick the visuals. So um, <laughs> this is kind of an equity thing that I've been thinking about um, because I was in one of those meetings in the workshop and people were talking about, oh, put visuals in your materials that are really representative. So students feel like they see themselves in there. And I thought, ooh, what a fantastic idea. I'll put the, you know, some scientists from underrepresented groups whose work we're going to talk about it, blah, blah, blah. And then someone else in the group who is from an underrepresented minority was like, I don't care about pictures. <laughs> She's like, that means nothing to me. And I and so I had this idea, because I still want the images to let the students pick something that felt representative to them. So, okay, so this part of the syllabus is about, um, you know, our, our unit on evolution. What kind of image would you put there? And of course, I'll give them some ideas to get their juices flowing. Or if it's the unit on plants, put your favorite plant in there. And with hypothesis, as you may know, it's very easy to annotate with images. So this is my next big idea for something that's a little more interactive and personally maybe meaningful to the students. They really do care about the syllabus because it's their grade. Um, instead of just having them annotate learning objectives and readings and stuff. So something with a little more, I don't know, meaning to them personally. That's what I had to share today. That is great, Kristen. Thank you. What a cool way to kind of get those students um, expressing their preferences and bringing them into the course in that really meaningful way. It's very cool. Um, two questions for you um, have come out of the Q&A. Number one, is the textbook an ebook or are you scanning the chapters of a printed book? That's a great question. I was just about to start typing, but it's quicker if I tell you. So um, it it is, there is an online version, but what I found was if if you have to click from section to section within one chapter, um, that doesn't work with the interface. It has to be all one continuous web page. So I had a, they already are published. It's an open textbook. So there, there are PDFs available. So that's what they're annotating is the PDFs. I don't like it quite as much because then they don't look at the online textbook with all its cool interactive features. But that, that was all I could do unless I just wanted them to annotate the first page of each chapter. <laughs> that's all hypothesis would do. Um, if I'm If I'm not understanding how to do the text, someone could tell me, but it didn't work. Um, and then for the other question, somebody asked, um, what, what, do, what do I give them as far as guidance for how, what to annotate? So I did give examples and I used, um, I adapted what hypothesis provided in terms, they have lots, as you might know, lots and lots of like sample assignments. So I adapted what was already there. So the students had examples of what I wanted them to say. And then we also had like a 20 minute we did it together in class the first time and it's graded. So it's also very specific how many annotations and how many replies to other people and what sort of reply counts as points. And I just really used the boilerplate from, from hypothesis and, and tailored it to my specific class. Yeah. And Christy, thank you for putting in the chat a link to the annotation starter assignments. I'm guessing that's kind of what you started with Kristen or yes. annotation. Yeah. Starter assignments. Absolutely. Yep. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, any other final questions or thoughts for Kristen before we move on? Put those in the Q&A if there are any. Otherwise, <clears throat> would anyone like to go second? Catalina, absolutely. I'm happy to second. Um, thanks. I think we're, we're using it in very similar ways, but in different ways. Um, discipline. So I teach primarily Spanish language and culture courses. Um, I, I actually have a couple of slides um, to share as well that will help me talk to you about hygiene. So I'm currently at 
the Ohio State University um, as an assistant professor there. I also worked prior, um, actually up until last year, as a assistant professor at, in the SUNY system at SUNY Oswego. So I have had experience using um, Hypothesis both with Blackboard and Canvas. Um, I started using it at SUNY, um, in the SUNY system because they were pushing using Hypothesis on campus. And then once I came, I liked it so much that when I came to OSU, I sought it out. Um, I use it primarily in my Spanish literature, I wrote literatura, <laughs> literature and culture courses. Um, and I do it in order to sort of replace a discussion board when it comes to weekly assignments. I was using it primarily when we were doing more distance education, um, when we were online because of COVID. And I brought that. I'm still using it even when I am now in person because I find it to be quite impactful um, to do social annotation with the weekly reading assignments versus other strategies that I have used, such as reading logs or discussion boards. This has been the one that's the most interactive among students in the course. Um, I use Hypothesis with three primary formats, either PDFs that I do OCR recognition on so that students can highlight the text. Um, I've also done it with graphic narratives, graphic novels, um, where I've run OCR recognition on it. It's not as dependable, but I'll show you kind of a workaround that I found for that if you want to use visual content in your courses. And I also use it with websites. Um, and so the instructions vary, but they follow a pattern. Generally, I have my students read or watch several texts and then annotate one of the texts so that I can have one main assignment in the LMS. But oftentimes they have to be speaking to all of the readings when they are um, completing the annotations on the single text. Um, so this is in Spanish, but basically uh, this was on Canvas or I guess on Canvas, we had instructions where I'll tell them what to read. One thing I do is to encourage them, especially students who are learning Spanish, to look up words is one of the low stakes assignments that they have is just to define words in the text. Um, and this is really useful because then when there is, when there are, I don't know, 15 students in the class defining three words each, they're fine. They have a lot of the words defined in line for them. They don't have to go to dictionaries as often. Um, then I have them complete their annotation assignments. I'll tell them approximately how many phrases I'm expecting them to write or how many sentences I'm expecting them to write. Um, I'll tell them if they need to respond to one of their classmates. I really did vary sort of the structure of the assignment depending on um, the reading itself. Um, but it was always they could expect that they would have to write a few things in line. One might be more of an observation, one might be proposing a question and answering a question. And generally, if the reading, sometimes they do have readings in English, particularly in the upper division courses, um, but generally they would have some sort of definition element as well. Um, so here I just have an example of one of the readings that was an assignment. And just, I mean, we saw the exact same thing just now. It looks the same um, where we had a comment from a student where they had highlighted, then another student had replied to them because that was one of the, um, the requirements of the assignment would be to reply to someone's comment and then the definitions in line in the text. This is an example from a website just to show you how the different formats work. So this would have been a PDF this would have been a website. And then this is when we had um, the graphic narrative. So I'm not sure if you can see here. Yes. So at the bottom of the screen, you'll see the page number 69 was highlighted. That was because I gave them essentially the workaround that if there was no text on the page that they could highlight to just highlight the page number. And that's how I got them to work with a graphic novel specifically. Um, so in terms of things to keep in mind, I would say, especially for those of us who are working in the humanities and might be working with different types of texts, um, finding creative workarounds for annotating images, 
finding creative workarounds for having the annotation speak to something that might not necessarily be textual, such as, well, besides images, such as a video clip. That was why I would have them annotate on one PDF or one page, but then have to speak to some of the other readings or texts that were assigned that week. Um, and then in terms of the LMS workflow, um, adding rubrics and assignments and the gradebook setup. Um, when you, this is more of a question of Canvas or Blackboard and less of a question of hypothesis, but just to have clear, since there are these tools where you can grade the assignment with a rubric um, and you can assign the assignments directly through the LMS, just having it clear, talking with, um, and I'm not sure if I thought maybe Jessica, you could speak to this more, whether for me, I always just sort of reached out to the Office of Distance Learning and the different resources we have at OSU in order to find out how best to incorporate the rubrics and the grade books um, with our LMS, but I'm sure the hypothesis as well has different resources that speak to um, how to do that. So that would be more of a, a a question, I guess, for you. <laughs> we do, um, yeah. We, um, for the CSNs that are panelists, can we pop some URLs into the chat with those resources, please? Thank you. Um, so that's pretty much what I did. I do see there's some questions. Um, oh, just the, the graphic novel. Yeah, so that was the main workaround for me with the graphic novel. And then I would say in terms of other thing, I mean, I, I have only used this in two specific upper division courses, but next semester I will be teaching Spanish film and again, and I didn't use it last semester and I do intend or last fall and I do intend to use it in the in the coming fall, but it would be interesting to see what other sort of creative strategies there might be for um, video content with hypothesis. Yeah, and that is on our roadmap, um, and we are having a webinar tomorrow, actually, to go over upcoming releases and what our product roadmap looks like. So highly encourage anybody to attend that if you're interested. I do have a quick question for you, Catalina, and that's what sort of response have you gotten from your students about using Hypothesis? I, last semester, one of my students wrote in their course evaluations that it was the first time they'd used hypothesis in class. And this was, I, the course evaluations don't speak to hypothesis at all. It's more that these were their general observations. And they commented that they really enjoyed using hypothesis because it was a much more interactive approach to com completing the readings and it felt much more guided. Um, I think that what students like about hypothesis is that they're used to the discussion board format and sort of the threaded responses. Um, and this feels more alive, I guess. You're really touching the text. You're really, you're not going away. From, well, I guess for me, you are going away from the text because I'm showing them so many texts at once. But generally, you are staying with the text when you're writing your comments and you're seeing others' comments in in text, in line with the text. Um, so it's um, a much more immersive form of reading, where, as um, Kristen was saying, sometimes we're just teaching them these active learning strategies that different students come to the class with different abilities. Some already have this, they already have these tools. Others need to be guided, in a sense, um, towards active reading. And I find Hypothesis to be well received with students um, because it, um, it's just a much, it's much more lively than a discussion board. And I love what you said about staying with the text, mm -hmm. connecting to it and touching that text. That's a great way to put it. Um, let's see. All right, wonderful. I don't think there's any questions I've missed. Thank you so much. It's just great to hear your insights. I love the, the workaround you provided with the image annotation. And I will say for the avoiding highlighting the same passages, I told them to limit how much they were allowed, how much they highlighted, and that they were not allowed to highlight the same passage that another student highlighted. So I would put that in my, because I was like, I don't want this text to be just a yellow block, <laughs> right? Because that's not necessarily a, a good reading strategy either. So that was one of the ways that I sort of directed that. That was a Q&A.
Thank you. Um, and thanks everyone for putting your questions in the Q&A. Please continue to do that throughout. And we'll just set aside some minutes at the end for a general Q&A as well. So if you have questions for everybody, we'll take those um, later on. But who would like to go next? Nita. Okay, hi. <laughs> So um, I'm speaking um, about hypothesis in uh, from the angle of a of an English professor. So I teach this advanced composition class, uh, which is um, titled as English 103, uh, and it's mainly about argumentation writing. So um, and uh, I'm also speaking from the angle of um, using hypothesis in completely asynchronous online classes, which is one of the most challenging, you know, um, I would say modalities of uh, uh, teaching, or at least it's, it's that's what most people think. So it's been one of my uh, uh, great journeys, you know, ever since 2004, 2006 or so to kind of, um, you know, um, try and see if I can beat all these challenges. So uh, very luckily and very thankful to Hypothesis, I came across this um, only last year, though I have been teaching online for a very long time. Um, um, so I started teaching uh, with I me, mean, just kind of, I said, okay, I need something. Um, I One of the basic philosophies of the class is um, social learning. Um, I tell students early on, like when you come into this class, even in the welcome letter, there are three ways in which you're going to learn. And one way is you're going to engage deeply with the course materials. You're going to engage deeply with each other and you're going to engage deeply with your professor. These are the three. So let's make this, we're going to stay within this triangle. And that's how we go. Uh, we are going to be very, very active, um, so active um, pretty much all the time. Um, so in, in a span of five days, uh, and this is completely asynchronous, there's continuously work to do uh, pretty much on every day. So they're, they're never, um, I try to <laughs> not have them, you know, uh, disengage at all. So, and then of course, I'm there with them throughout, um, throughout, you know, uh, sort of encouraging them to go here and there and to do things. Okay. So um, I came across hypothesis and once I learned like what this can do, I said, okay, I'm going to start experimenting with it. And I just, um, you know, went, um, you know, if, uh, my first experimentation was to use it as an assignment worked just fine. There were, there were just no issues. I was able to grade in Canvas Speed Grader very easily, and I was able to see um, the highlights and the thoughts. I could unhighlight things and see what's going on. So there, there was there was stuff happening. Okay. And um, that was, but that was an assignment. And I thought, okay, I need to see if they can be self-motivated with this. And let's see if, what if I did not put points and, and I just let them talk. Um, so I would give them like an item and say, go, um, you're going to start annotating just the way you did in your assignment. And then we're going to talk about this later on, but let's first do this. You, and, and then we will come back into the discussion board and reflect on it. And we'll talk about what just happened with this annotation exercise. And I only ask why, in, and, and in my um, directions, I only ask for one annotation. And in a class one, this is an early summer class. So in a class of 30, there were like 100 and something annotations happening on just that one particular um, essay. Um, so uh, I thought, oh, okay. Um, I asked for one, but that means they're actually going, they're actually writing, they're actually thinking about this. They're liking to see each other's thoughts. That's what I was anticipating. So I had them come back and discuss it. So let's talk about this. And um, so what do you like? shall we continue with this? What do you like about this? And they said, I really like, um, uh, I really like viewing someone else's thoughts. So, and then I thought, okay, so you couldn't get closer to someone's thoughts than this, right? When we come back and put stuff on the discussion board, we are already refining things. Like, oh, you know, grammatically is my sentence well balanced? Is this, this, is this, am I saying the right thing? Delete. No, over here, you're just, you're just reading, you're focused on that line and you write. And then you read what someone else has done with that in that state of consciousness. 
So they actually like, the, just the way I was anticipating they might like it, it actually turned out to be true. They were liking that part. Okay, so now we are set. We're going to start doing things. Third thing I noticed was when I gave them an essay to do, and I had, um, this was like a response argument, very simple, first, first essay, so simple, um, just 1,500 words and so on. So, and they had a bunch of options. So they were, this was, this was in the experimentation stage. So I said, okay, so you, you're going to annotate this, but then the rest of them, rest of the essays that were on the prompt, I did not have them annotate. So you just read on your own and you, you do your thing, you know, like you've always done. And when, and you, you can choose whichever you want to respond to, A, B, C, D, respond to any essay that you like. Okay. And what did they respond to? They responded to the two, most of them, 95% of them responded to the ones they had annotated in hypothesis. So that social annotation was doing something that was registering in their mind, that was giving them some sort of confidence that um, they were able to develop their own thoughts on the thoughts that were being posted. So there was a lot of stuff with, and this is a critical thinking advanced comp class. That's exactly what I wanted. So um, I, and, and uh, so that, okay, so, okay, this is it, this is it, this is what I need um, in, in teaching English um, composition, advanced comp. And so then I began to branch out into other things. So now this semester, so there are two ways uh, essentially that I, I um, uh, place hypothesis in my Canvas modules. One is assignment, the other is simply as an item, and then they bring that discussion back into a discussion board. So because Canvas discussion board is kind of like an, it's, it's you know, HTML based and it's very, um, you know, it's, 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 it's adaptable to lots of other um, um, applications. So I, my hypothesis is one of those things I bring in there. Say, okay, let's talk about this. And reflection happens, a lot of learning happens. Two other things I did this semester said, okay, let's do this TED talk um, annotation. Why not, right? Because it should work as any other any other site. Um, um, and so, and, and you can timestamp it and say, this is what this author, this is what the speaker says, and, and then talk about that. And that worked very well. It was actually a TED talk on language and how a particular student uses language. It's just fantastic. And, and they were able to um, discuss that. Uh, the third thing um, or, or the fourth thing that I did, a new thing this semester was, I said, okay, so here you, you write, you're going to write essay number three, which is your big 2000 word research-based argument, the one that everybody gets scared and runs away from, but stay with, let, let's stay together. Let's, we, we can all, you know, do this. And here, I'm going to walk you through these steps. One of the steps that they had to work on was, I gave them a model essay. Okay, let's do this in hypothesis. So I simply inserted this it as a PDF and said, okay, let's let's start looking at this. Why am I even calling this a model essay? What is it about the thesis that that is so you know all that? Uh, what is it about the evidence the student brings? And so, so they began to discuss that. And then once again they reflected. And one of the common things I heard was it was so nice to reflect on this because this is what I learned from the model paper. This is what I learned from the model paper. And, and uh, those are the essays that I'm reading right now. <laughs> I don't know if I get done with them even before the semester closes, so I better get, get done with them. So um, that really worked out. Um, so these are some of the things that I have done so far um, with hypothesis. Um, what else? Um, yeah. So that that those are some of the things that I'm, I'm sorry I did not make any slides etc. You know like like <laughs> you all did so well. Uh, um, but um, I'm I'm absolutely sure that hypothesis is working very well because I'm trying to look at this from the students' viewpoint um, and it's always asking them you know what do you think this is this is working what is what is um, uh, working you know about it do you like it do you dislike it what's happening. So everything, pretty much all the applications that I use, whether it is Pronto, whether it is, um, you know, some some something else, everything is I, I kind of you know um, ask students to 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 be very be very active with it, engage with it, and then kind of decide, yes or no. 
want it or don't want it. And so far, you know, it's been a yes through our for hypothesis. So um, I um, kind of spoke about it to my college, um, um, you know, online uh, committee, online education committee, I think it's called, um, and uh, presented hypothesis to them, um, how it works, how it works in my classes and so on. And they were, uh, you know, and, and they, they were, um, they embraced it. And said let's let's give it a shot so uh, now they they have uh, we have hypothesis for the whole school so it's not just an english teacher who has to you know who, who has got the uh the fantastic you know tool um i was i was telling jessica and after this island i'm sorry i'm taking so long um i was telling jessica before we uh, we all started that you know community college professors we do not have the luxury of having <laughs> teaching assistants and so on so what I look for is all these tools. These tools are pretty much my teaching assistants, you know. So um, and, and um, uh, when you're teaching many, many asynchronous online classes, you know, with, with hundred and something students all together put together, and you're going through composition after composition after composition, something like this has truly helped my students. And if if it helps them, it helps me, and that's good enough for me. That's it. I love what you said about how students pointed out how helpful it was for them to see other people's thinking. Yeah. I think that's really important. I know I've experienced that myself. When you get to see other people thinking about a thing, it helps you reflect on your own thinking and figure out what you actually think in a way that is harder to get to when you're by yourself thinking about it. So yeah, yeah thanks for bringing that up. Sure. Um, there are two questions for you. Do you use revision for the essays that students write? Is hypothesis part of that revision process? Um, actually for advanced comp, um, I do not use. And in some of the more entry level classes where I used to use um, the revision process that, that I have not yet tried with hypothesis. But for the advanced comp class where they already are very well trained um, in research and everything, um, they have to just kind of climb higher um, on the argumentation ladder. Um, yeah, I do not use the revision process. <laughs> and then final question, how did you have students annotate a TED Talk video? Yeah, so you you just, um, um, it, let's say it's a short, let's say seven minute TED Talk video, right? So I asked them to timestamp it. Say, okay, so at this point, a two minute, uh, 2.01 minute, this is what the author says. And they can they can you know um, um, either quote it or they can um, e even paraphrase it like this is what she says and, and and that's what you know I am reflecting on or I am commenting on it. Were they annotating the transcript of the video? Um, they have the option of uh, because it's an asynchronous online class. Uh, you know we never mandate like you have to watch this. You know we never do that. So, you know, there's always in all the um, learning modules, they have the option of watching the video or reading the transcript or, or uh, you know, um, just listening to the audio or using something else to do both. All those options are there. So, yeah, some of them, if they want to uh, annotate the transcript, that's just fine. Yeah. Thank in, you in so fact, much. Yeah, sure. Sorry, were you going to say a final thing there? No, I was just going to say, like, um, luckily in TED, you know, they have all the transcripts, you know, done. Um, sometimes you might find a YouTube video where you do not have that option. Um, in that case, you know, we'll, we'll have to kind of work around it in, in some, some way yeah. with AI. <laughs> right. But again, yeah, video annotation is on our roadmap and something we're working towards. Yeah. Um, thank you so much. Really appreciate you sharing. Um, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to Felix. Are you ready, Felix? Hello, everyone. Um, my name is, is Felix Flores, Assistant Professor of Marketing at MSU Denver. And uh, Anita, that's a great idea of using it for TED Talks. So I also have some TED Talks in that class, and I'm using it right now. And I'm like, sorry, thinking like, hmm, that, that could be a good use. So I, I learned about hypotheses from a faculty learning community. We have different faculty learning communities, but I was attending one on open educational resources, which are basically like free resources that you could incorporate into your classes. And uh, the speaker was just all excited about it. So I'm like, okay, this might be worth uh, checking out. My initial question was like, well, well, how is this different from discussion questions? But once I started using it, I'm like, oh, this is totally different. 
because students can pick those different sentences, paragraph or content that, that drew them, that caught their attention and then just comment. So everyone gets to pick what, what caught their attention. So that's the first difference <laughs> that, I, that I, I noticed. Um, so I, I used it initially in my online class. This is for multicultural marketing. And again, I, I printed out PDFs from the, the, the online textbook that I found, which is free, it's so OER. And I uploaded those into my Canvas shell, created like weekly readings, and then um, used it as a hypothesis assignment. Um, my prompt is like, make at least two annotations of anything that you find interesting, surprising, or relatable about the reading and respond to at least one of your classmates posts. So that's currently what I've, what I've been using. I, I, I think it's, it's worked great. Um, at the moment, I haven't used a rubric, uh, just as um, did they or not annotate and did they reply to at least one classmate post. So that's basically what I've used. I, I think I saw some links about now uh, potentially being integrated into speed grader, I don't know, but that, that was kind of my, my, my only um, observation, like, oh, how, uh, at the moment, at least I haven't looked at it again, is, is how could I integrate this into speed, speed grader so I could quickly go through those, but still, it's, 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 it's not that bad, uh, especially in terms of, of the value that it adds to students, uh, um, student to student interactions, that, that's just um, so much richer as opposed to discussion questions where it feels like it's more about them completing an assignment as opposed to like the speakers have said, really getting to know what other students think about different topics and, and even starting conversations among themselves. So that's pretty cool. Um, also, if uh, sometimes they don't feel as bad if they don't understand something and they see that, oh, several students did not understand it. So, okay, so it's, it's not that bad, right? Um, what else? So that was my first um, use of hypotheses. And then I started thinking, well, this could be also useful for my face-to-face -face classes. So that's the experiment that I was, I'm running this semester. So um, I assigned the reading, including the annotations before the lecture. So that also gets students reading because sometimes that's a problem, right? They, they, they walk into our lectures and they like haven't read the, the material. So, so the assignment, the reading and annotations are due before the lecture. So now they at least read some part and have shared their thoughts on that. And I set a due date that's a couple of days before the lecture so that I could also go in and take a look at, okay, what are they thinking? Where are they, um, any questions that they still have? So then I'm able to tailor my lecture into, um, tailor my, my lecture based on all those comments and annotations. So I think that that's, that's pretty cool. So I also have incorporated into the face-to-face -face class. It's just uh, interesting when we actually in the discussion because it feels like with the canvas, with, with the hypotheses, annotations, they just share all of this information, thoughts, opinions, experiences that they have. And I'm not used to that in face-to-face in -face settings, right? They're like, yeah, who, who, who has a question? Who's a thought? It's like one or two students that usually participate, but most of the classes are quiet. And, and it still happens, but I'm like, I mean, guys, come on, you just share all of these different insights and thoughts and experiences. Uh, so it does feel like it's more like they, they may be a little bit shy in, in the face-to-face -face setting, but that allows them the opportunity to share all those things that, that, that they have to share. So also, yeah, again, uh, incorporated in, into my face-to-face -face classes. Um, during the first time that I incorporated, I also launched a specific uh, survey to gather feedback in terms of, of their experiences. And it, it was all positive. Some students were even like, this should be implemented into all of our online classes. And I would uh, agree with that, especially since in my case, we have a university license. So this is something that we don't have to invest in, our students don't have to invest in. And if it's uh, fostering all these rich student, student interactions, I'm like, why not? Why not use this? Um, I'm also thinking about right now our chat, chat GPT world <laughs> in terms of, okay, what do we do with all these uh, potential for plagiarism and all that? And I'm like, that, that, that could be a way also 
um, there's at least some extra steps. You know, it's not as easy as just going in the web page and asking for an essay and getting an output. Um, you have to go into hypothesis and do the, the annotations and do the, the, the discussions, reply to your classmates. So I would hope, right, that it will make it a little bit, at least a little bit harder and um, for students to, to, to go out of their way and, and input some of the questions into chat GPT. And also it's, it's not that difficult. It's more about making it relatable. So what did you find surprising, interesting, relatable? Give me your, uh, thoughts on that and and I'm not even at, at the moment grading that like oh did you discuss this in a certain length and did did you criticize and integrate it? and it's just tell me what you think right and I, so far I haven't had a problem where I was like oh this was this was this was cool this was interesting no no they they, they want to share I, I, I think that this is what I found they want to share you know what they, what do they think what their experiences have been and and and, and stuff like that so so yeah, I, 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 for me right now, that's like an additional benefit that it gives something in terms of assignment that's a little bit more engaging and it's not as easy as just, again, logging into a web page and asking for an essay. So uh, what else do I have here? Yeah, yeah it's the only thing that, that I have faced, I haven't again looked into it is like when I replicate my canvas shell, sometimes I feel, I find that I need to relink those reading, those PDFs, um, um, the rubric and, that's, but yeah. So those are the only things that I have to like consider, um, but I haven't looked at it. Maybe, maybe uh, those are issues that uh, have been solved. And in terms of how to start, like I've heard some professors do like, oh, start with a syllabus and start small and just like, but I decided to just go full in and now like, let's do a, like a whole reading assignment for, for the weekly readings. And I didn't have any issues in terms of that. Uh, on the contrary, student feedback was, was great. So, oh, so I saw a comment from Catalina. It's pretty easy to integrate into Canvas pre-grade, okay? So yeah, so now starting our, our summer shell, I could look back into and, and integrate it with speedgrader. So thanks, thanks for that. Yeah, you and should have it. access. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, that's that's my that's my experience. In Canvas, you should be able to just click the speed grader button when you are in your assignment and it should just take you it, straight in. Yeah, Catalina. It depends on okay. how you set it up. I learned that the way that I was, it's like an order of operations issue where essentially you have to set up the I'm trying to remember this because I haven't used it this semester. You have to set up the assignment. Then you have to create your rubric. Then you have to add the external tool. Then okay. you add your, and then you add hypothesis. So you don't just add hypothesis. You add assignment, then rubric, then hypothesis. So it's this like order okay, of operations okay. that if you don't follow it, then it won't show up in SpeedGrader. There is an article that Christy put in the chat at 1030 about how to use hypothesis with Canvas rubrics and it walks through that setup that you're just describing yet because there is a, a specific okay. order you have to follow if you're wanting to link your rubric to your yeah. site. Yeah. Right. And I don't know if, if we have access to those hyperlinks or, or the chat after we're done with, with the session, but I just went ahead and just clicked on everything just so <laughs> I know that I have it on my on my browser because uh, it seems like they're they're great, 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 great information, great tips. Yeah, the chat tra ch chat transcript should be available with the recording okay. afterwards. So we'll, right. we'll save it all for you. Right. Um, thank you so much. Um, I know we're already you know four minutes from the end, so I'm just going to go ahead and open it up. If there are general questions for the whole group, um, we don't have much time, unfortunately, for questions. But please put those in the Q and A, and we'll try to handle at least a few general questions. Um, but otherwise, thank you, Felix. Um, I really like what you said kind of about how there's all this untapped like insight and reaction within our students. And sometimes it's like, how do you bring that out? I love what you mentioned about students just kind of willingly offering that through hypothesis in a way that they hadn't been necessarily in, in person. So thank you for sharing that. And um, thank you to everybody. I am inspired by everything you all shared. it's This is my favorite thing to do is get together and just hear from instructors. So we really appreciate you sharing. Um, question, are there student complaints or bugs with hypothesis? 
um, anyone encountering struggles in your courses on that front? I would say just make sure you do um, text recognition on the readings um, with the PDF reader. So just run OCR on Adobe because the only times I, I they weren't complaints. It was just, I can't highlight this. <laughs> and then sometimes students won't tell you. And then you go into hypothesis and you're like, oh, what's going on here? So just make sure that you run text recognition. Um, if it's, for example, like a scanned text um, and just make sure that you can highlight um, the reading in some way. Otherwise, hypothesis is very limited because they can't highlight. Yeah, and I just put in it in the chat actually, and Christy did as well. We have our own OCR tool. Also, if you don't have access to Adobe, you can drop your file in our doc drop tool and it will add an OCR layer to any PDF for you as well. I was just going to throw out there that um, <clears throat> in, in my experience, students struggle with every new little thing I try. And I did not have one single question about hypothesis. I showed them the first day, which I think must be good, um, you know, user experience design. But not one. I was shocked. I thought, okay, I'll spend the first two weeks helping them figure out how to use it. And that it was so intuitive, like Catalina said. That's our goal. So, yeah, yeah we love to hear that. Um, I see a question about the roadmap. We are having a separate webinar um, covering the roadmap. So I'd encourage you to, to attend that and get those questions answered. Um, best practices for copying assignments from one Canvas course to another. Um, we should actually have a how-to article that walks through that in detail as well, if someone wants to throw that in the chat. Um, anyone want to speak to that? So the question is that you want to import the assignment from one Canvas shell to another? Yeah, and it looks like actually Becky threw in the chat the how-to article on, on course copy with hypothesis, um, the step-by-steps -steps to follow for that. And it does depend somewhat on the LMS as well. Yeah. Um, here's one. Has anyone used hypothesis for something like a peer review assignment? for students to get feedback on projects or drafts. I have not, but I can imagine that it would work the same way as um, track changes. So it would just, I, I think that's actually, I would, I would maybe um, experiment with that. I think that's a good idea. I don't know. Especially if you do, um, oh, you're saying for peer, yeah. I, I can imagine that would be really good. I hadn't even thought of that. That's a really great idea. Yeah. Yeah, I think it can be done, especially I'm, I'm thinking Canvas because in Canvas, in assignments, we can set up group assignments. So that's where the peer review hypothesis can, can work. I'm gonna go ahead and actually share my screen for our final minutes here. Thank you, I know folks, probably have to run at the hour. So if you, have to, if you have to take off, please don't hesitate to do that. But for folks that can hang out for an extra two or three minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and just share some final resources with you that are in our slide deck here. Um, I do wanna mention anyone attending today, if you're a current user of Hypothesis or for all of our faculty panelists, we would love to have you share annotation assignment ideas because we are developing um, a resource collection of social annotation assignments submitted by educators. Um, you can check that out here. Um, and then down here is a link to actually submit an assignment idea. So if anyone is willing and able to do that, we would be so appreciative of that. Um, I also wanted to just end by mentioning that there's so many different ways to connect with the hypothesis community, find more resources, get one-on-one -on -one help. Um, so as customer success managers, I'm here. I know we have most of the members of our customer success team on the webinar today. Uh, we are always happy to meet with you if you're a partner school to take a look at how to implement social annotation in your particular course. We also offer customized workshops and trainings um, and I'd refer you to actually our liquid margins collection. 
we run a video show, which is typically a panel discussion with educators, kind of similar to this, um, but usually focused on a topic. Um, where folks get together and talk about that topic in relation to social annotation. And so this link will take you to our whole archive of that. And there's tons of amazing content to explore there if you're looking for ideas. Um, our resource collection, again, with those assignments is linked here. We also have a Slack forum called our Hypothesis Educator Forum, where if you're wanting to just find people to chat with about social annotation ideas, please consider joining that. Our support email is here. And then I'll also put in a plug for our amazing Hypothesis Academy, which Kristen, who had to sign off, um, was a graduate of our very first cohort. This is an asynchronous course that teaches you how to use Hypothesis, how to design social annotation assignments for your particular course, um, how to craft a grading plan that fits your course. Um, it's totally free for partners. So if your school subscribes to Hypothesis, you can register via this link here. And then I will end by saying, I know we have a mixture of folks here today. We have um, folks from subscribing institutions and those who don't yet have access to Hypothesis or license it at your institution. If you have any follow-up questions, if you are a partner, please contact us at this success at Hypothesis email address. If you're not yet a partner or you're not sure if your school is yet using Hypothesis, you can contact us at education at Hypothesis. And for those who are not yet partners, we actually are running a summer boost promotion this summer um, with discounted pricing, unlimited usage, um, access to training and workshops. So if you have questions about this or want to learn more, please do reach out to us at Education at Hypothesis to learn more. And I'm actually going to go back one slide again just so you can see the contact emails because um, we would love to talk to you more about this. So again, I want to thank the faculty who joined us today and shared. This was so insightful and meaningful. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Um, we really appreciate it. And have a great day, everyone. Thank you for coming.